sometimes known as a European 4G63 or a Chevy small block of the old continent. A 1.8T is the engine to consider if you are looking for a budget tunable powerhouse. Although they are not as popular as a coal rolling 1.9, they are pretty widespread and most notably quite affordable. This video might give you a reason to think about it. The 1.8T is an out-developed engine, revealed in 1994, made all the way to 2010, but its roots can be traced back to the 1960s. It began with a Mercedes M118, built with incredibly high compression ratio variant, up to 11.2 to 1 in a 1.7 litre. Due to the high pressure inside the cylinders, it could not provide satisfactory reliability and NVH levels, hence a new power plant development was commenced at the turn of the 60s and 70s. The result was an EA827 engine with an iron block, aluminum head and two other things carried over up to the current EA888, an 88mm bore spacing and a 20 degree right bias inclination. Somehow the 1.8T is called the EA113 slash EA827 engine as the first variants used a mix of the EA827 engine block with an intermediate shaft and an EA113 double overhead cam head. That is an O58 block using an external water pump where an oil pump is driven by the intermediate shaft, fitted into early B5 Audi A4s and Passats. The later version has got more of the EA113 design with a block inserted water pump and no intermediate shaft, a so called O6A block. Other distinctions are slightly different size wrist pins and head bolts. The O58 has got larger ports, but were dropped later on for a poor air velocity. <laughs> A wide range of the 1.8T iterations was available, from 150 to 240 horsepower. The block and head materials remained the same as the predecessor. The iron bottom end featured a 5 main bearing layout with the aluminium twin cam top end. First and foremost, there is a forged crankshaft, forged crack connecting rods and forged pistons. Fundamentally, internals were the same across the lineup. A minor difference was a deeper piston dish, present on the 210 to 240 horsepower motors with a lower 9 to 1 compression ratio. All jets are a standard feature of the 20 valve, even on a non turbo 1.8. <laughs> the 1.8T was equipped with a timing belt, and on the back of the engine, there is a secondary chain drive to turn the intake cam by the exhaust camshaft. The engine breathing was carried out by a Borg Warner KO3 turbo. A few were fitted with a KO3S and a KO4, fitting a single intercooler via an electronic throttle body. The intake plenum was made of an aluminium, feeding each cylinder via three inlet valves. Some versions used a camshaft phaser for variable valve timing. As it lacked direct injection, a 5 valve per cylinder setup was an easy development, inspired by Yamaha. <laughs> Regarding daily driving and reliability, this is a pleasant engine to commute with. There are no serious issues with it, partially thanks to its simplicity. The turbo should hold about 160,000 km, and the engine itself, if taken care of, 300,000 km easily. The major trouble may be oil sludge, as the oil pan can only hold 3.5 to 4.5 liters of oil. The dipstick should be checked often enough and oil changes done sooner rather than later, roughly every 7,500 km to prevent it from getting really bad. Ignition coils are allegedly also a common problem alongside leaky water pumps with plastic impellers and faulty vacuum system. Those hoses harden and break after years of driving, valves inside them get clogged up and also false air may be drawn into intake. 
you may not even know, my engine ran no problem with the false air intake after the MAF sensor. Considering various tuning possibilities, this is a wonderful platform to mod. Right out of the box with the minor engine mapping, figures of 190 to 200 horsepower are a piece of cake on a stock turbo. To extend its potential, a larger intercooler and free-flowing exhaust are essential to gain additional 10 to 20 horsepower as the maximum reliable boost on that small turbo is about 1 bar. Beyond that, RKO4 or a different larger unit is a must, resulting in an output of 240 to 250 horsepower. Forum guys will tell you that the stock internals are reliable enough for 300 to 350 wheel horsepower with a ported head and right size fuel injectors. The 1.2 bar KO4 turbo won't get you there, but with a Garrett GT28 or GT30 kind of a turbo, it is possible. When it comes to the crank and block limits, 700 wheel horsepower won't be an issue. Intake valves will cope with it easily, upwards of 800 horsepower, but exhaust valves won't handle 400 plus horsepower. Also, most of the head elements are fine up to 7200 rpm. Pistons are strong enough for 500 to 550 horsepower, 20mm wrist spin models slightly more, but rods will let go much sooner, especially very torquey, fast pulling builds. The threshold is about 400 Nm, 300 pound feet. Finally, it is easy to increase stroke as most Volkswagen 4 cylinders use the same bore spacing. Hence, a TDI or a TSI crankshaft will work. This can enlarge the displacement to 2 liters or 2.1 liter. All things considered, the 1.8T is a very reliable engine that can return a reasonable fuel consumption in its stock form. If power potential is what you seek, this is also a unit to look at. Whether you want a transverse engine platform as a front-wheel drive or a Haldex all-wheel drive, or you desire a longitudinal layout with a proper mechanical torsion-based quattro, the 1.8T provides endless possibilities. Only shame is that it is only a 4-cylinder and the sound is not as pleasant as a 5-cylinder or a twin-turbo 2.7 V6.